Welcome to Horseshoe Bend in Page, Arizona. We are working now in the third set of exercise files, Horseshoe Bend. And in the first set, Salt and Sea, we took quite a bit of extra time just going through everything in detail since it was our first time we kind of processed these photos. In the Antelope Canyon set, we worked through our photos quite quickly and I really just wanted to show you that this overall HDR processing technique really doesn't take that long once you have mastered it and gotten used to it. In fact, most time I can take a raw set of bracketed photos, turn them into a finished canvas ready HDR within 10 to 15 minutes. From here on out, we're going to go at a nice steady pace, not going too slow, and at the same time, not going too fast. We're going to try and find that speed that's just right, kind of like Goldilocks in her nice bowl of soup, except we're going to talk about Lightroom and not soup. All right, let's get back to Horseshoe Bend, and in this video, we're going to explain exactly how we got the shot, talk about a few of the scene considerations as well. Now, you'll notice that we have four images here, and you might be wondering why, because previously we had three, and we know typically a bracketed sequence is going to be an odd number of images, so why are there four images? Well, it's because we're actually using the in-camera HDR processing uh, function from the 5D Mark III. So newer cameras are going to have in-camera HDR processing, and what's going to happen is, it's going to allow you to control the bracketing and everything in the camera, and it's going to generate that HDR file directly in camera. Now, if you remember from our previous videos, when we're using this technique, we're generally not using the actual outputted HDR file because we want to process them independently. So right now, you might be asking, well, Pi, why are we doing in-camera HDR if we're not going to actually use the JPEG? This is the reason. Number one, using the camera to control the HDR process makes it very simple. For example, we can do things like two second delays and all that kind of stuff, and it's going to automatically take all the photos even when we're using a two second delay and mirror lockup. Now, the other option is to use a shutter release and to use mirror lockup and press the button multiple times if we're using standard bracketing. The HDR processing uh, or the HDR function is actually going to do that for you. So that's one of the big benefits is that it simplifies the overall shooting of these HDR bracketed sequences. The second reason that we're shooting with the in-camera HDR function is because it allows us to preview that bracketed photo or that processed HDR photo right in camera. And that's what's great about it. That's really the kind of the best thing about it. So for example, here is our JPEG image. This is the one that was processed in camera. And what I'm looking for is detail in the image. I want to make sure in particular that my histogram covers everything from my highlights to the shadows because that means that I've shot my bracketed sequence, sequence correctly. Because we can see in the histogram, we can see all of our shadow detail, none of the highlight details blown. This is a perfect HDR sequence because we've retained all the detail in the setup. So that's really the nicest reason, that's really the main reason why we're going with the HDR function in camera is because in addition to controlling uh, kind of everything about the actual bracketing process and mirror lockup and everything like that, all the functions of shooting, it's also giving us a great preview of what that HDR file is going to look like. That being said, we're not going to use it once we get into post, so we can just basically ax it at this point. And what I would do is take it and hit reject so it actually becomes a rejected photo. Here are the three photos that we will be using. Let's jump right into the median exposure by hitting E and talk about exactly how this was shot. Now we're shooting at full resolution raw, and we shot this at one second on F16 at ISO 100 on a 17 to 40 F4 uh, L Canon lens. This is on the 5D Mark III body as well. Why are we shooting with these settings? Well, the main reason why I'm at F16 is really because that longer shutter speed is potentially going to give me a little bit more glassy look in the water. All right, again, we're at ISO 100 because we want to maximize the tonal range. There's no reason in this scene to bring it up because we don't really have anything moving. I mean, everything is moving slow enough that a slow shutter speed isn't going to make a difference. So I can leave ISO at 100. We can maximize detail, maximize dynamic range and color by leaving it at that setting. Let's check out the other two versions. So here we have our darker image. This is at one quarter of a second, two stops under. And then we have our brighter image at four seconds. And here we get even a slightly better glassy look on this water or the surface of the water. But still, you really don't see that much movement there. I mean, you can see a tiny bit of ripple going on here. But otherwise, I mean, the water is moving so slow that you can't really notice anything. Look, there's some campers down here camping. I actually made a fire later on that night and it was really easy to see. It's kind of cool. 
All right, so everything looks good. We have talked through how we shot it. Really, there weren't too many scene considerations here other than just not falling off a cliff. We did shoot, of course, on a tripod like we always do with these types of shots because you really get the best results out of it. By the way, if you're shooting at these popular locations, uh, for example, Horseshoe Bend in Page, Arizona, expect to see lots of other photographers there. Uh, in fact, Page, Arizona in general is just an amazing place for photography. You have Lake Powell and Antelope Canyon and Horseshoe Bend and everything in between. You could spend weeks there photographing this entire place. And everywhere you go, there's going to be lots of other photographers. So you have to keep that in mind when you're going to locations like Horseshoe Bend. Make sure that you're showing up early because there are going to be quite a few people. And to get the best spots, you want to be there quite a bit earlier than sunset. Probably on that day that we shot this, there were around 300 people perched along the cliffside uh, shooting this exact same scene. All right, so But we had the best spot because... Well, because we're SR Lounge and we just shove people off the cliff. I'm just kidding. We actually didn't do that. I actually, I met a, a wonderful uh, girl there. She was really nice. I asked her if we can kind of share two spots. We had two spots and, you know, uh, I asked her, hey, is it cool if we just kind of switch back and forth and keep these two spots for ourselves? And she was totally down with that. So we just kind of switched back and forth and made friends and it was awesome. And I found out later that she's actually a designer for Tommy Hilfiger and she just likes to shoot photographs on the side. So... That's a little tip for you guys. Make friends with other photographers because they'll help you out too. We're not competitors. We're friendly people that all enjoy the same craft. All right, great job, guys. Let's go on to the next video where we actually start preparing our photos for processing.